It being 6.31 on Tuesday, November 12th, I'll hereby call this regular meeting of the Gardner School Committee to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Yes. Mrs. Cormier. Present. Mrs. Hurst. Present. Mr. Lafreniere. Present. Mrs. Layton. Absent. Mrs. Palavin. Present. Mr. Schwartz. Present. Mayor Nicholson. Present. Dr. Pellegrino. Present. And Nora Morris, student representative. Absent. Thank you very much. Please rise from the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll begin with item B on our agenda. This is open time for the general public. Is there anyone here from the general public who wishes to be heard? Seeing none, moving on to item C, recognitions by the superintendent. Dr. Pellegrino. I can call up Sherry McCall, please. So Sherry's, um, Sherry's actually not new to Gardner Public Schools by any means. She was a teacher and a retired principal. Helen May Sauter, right? Yes, yeah, last time I was here was 2010. Wow, okay. <laughs> so um, we, what we wanted to do today was honor um, um, Sherry and her team who've been working with our immigrant families um, on the third floor of, um, of the administration building, um, doing all kinds of things. And I thought it was better, and I'm sure you'd all agree, if I don't necessarily tell what, um, what they've been doing, but Sherry can actually elaborate on this much better than I. All right, thank you. Right here? Yep. Okay. Um, well, good evening, Mayor Nicholson, Dr. Pellegrino, school committee members. Uh, thank you for allowing us a few minutes to share about the Gardner Immigration Circle. Um, we're a community group. We're dedicated to supporting and empowering the immigrants in Gardner and the surrounding areas. Through education, advocacy, cultural exchange, the organization fosters an inclusive environment that values the contributions of the immigrants. The circle provides resources, organizes events, and promotes programs to assist with the integration, language learning, and community engagement, helping our newcomers to build a meaningful um, life here. We started in November 2023, it was a year ago, and the literacy volunteers of the Montachusetts area were approached by the Gardner Community Action Center to see what we could do to help. And four of us came forward, and those uh, four of us were John Bernard, Carla Roy, um, and Dave Kutcher, and myself. And Mike Ellis, the director of the Senior Center, offered a large room for us to meet, which was great. Um, the Community Action Center actually helped provide materials for us, and we were ready to go, except unexpectedly, 40 of the Haitian immigrants signed up for lessons. It was a daunting challenge. So to meet that, Dave Kutcher rallied some friends and we got some resources to purchase materials. And then I called upon the retired teachers from Gardner who enthusiastically joined our group and do what they know how to do best. Um, pretty soon other people from the community stepped up and we were able to do at least small group work with the um, Haitian immigrants that were coming in. Um, and then we noticed that they had their little ones with them, the ones that were not old enough to be in school. And of course, being Gardner teachers, we weren't going to let that go by. <laughs> so um, we quickly got together lots of materials. We raided our grandkids' closets. We brought in books and blocks. And then I have to say that Maureen Blasco and Patty Stanko stepped up and led that component. Um, pretty soon we outgrew our space, and that's when we came to see Dr. Pellegrino. And we also connected with um, Lori Simpson, the director of the Multilingual Learning Department at GPS, and they offered us the two spacious rooms on the third floor. That was a game changer for us. We no longer had to lug things in and out. We could set it up like a schoolroom. We had a separate room for the kids, and it's, it really helped us to have a lot more integrity to the program. Um, so, also, the tutors here, I just can't say enough about them, they just have been so dedicated. They recognized that that two hours a day, or two hours a week, was not really going to support the learning. So they started working at the library, having um, conversation circles for them. 
meeting with them outside of the two hours a week that we meet with them, giving them more tailored instructions, driving lessons, helping them to get their licenses. And it has been so rewarding to get to know these wonderful um, documented immigrants that are here in our community. They have worked very hard. They have learned the language, they've secured jobs, they've got their driver's license, they've purchased cars, and now they're getting apartments and moving into places of their own. They're very, very hardworking people, and it's just been our pleasure to work with them. Um, recently, we've had a little change to our program um, with Egyptian immigrants that have been coming through the door, and so it's been our pleasure to serve them as well. Over the past year, there have been many different people from Gardner that have participated in our program, but there has been a core group that are, most of them are here today, of 10 of us that have been uh, consistent in working with them every week. And that's John Bernard, Carla Roy, Robert Fairchild and Nora Dooley, Eileen Gogan, Nellie Langlois, Dave Kucher, Ava Jason, Maureen Blasco, and Patty Stanko. But thank you for allowing us to share. Thank you for coming. I think that's, that's a Thank wonderful you. <laughs> so, what I'd like to do is um, read off the names because I'm going to be passing the script. Um, each one of the folks, maybe we can get a picture of our Facebook account. Would that be all right? Sure. Anybody need photo of us? No? Okay. All right. And if anybody wants to join us Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, that's where I'll So, of course, Sharon Bowman. John Bernard. Eileen Gogan, one of our retired teachers. <laughs> Nellie Langlois, another one of our retired teachers. <laughs> Carla Roy. Patty Sanko, another one of our retired teachers. Maureen Blasco, Dave Kucher, Nora Dooley. Oh. Maureen Blasco, Dave Kucher, Nora Dooley. I'm married. <laughs> you don't have to whisper that. You can tell. Robert Yeah, David Jason. Did we, did we miss? Yep. Okay. Thank All right. You. Now maybe we can just get right in the hall over here. Just get a quick thing. Um, the committee will be in a brief recess. back to order at 6.42 p.m. Uh, we'll move on to item D of the agenda. This is the consent agenda. Uh, this was included in your packet for information. Included in this is the acceptance of $150,000 grant funding, uh, donations from the class of 1974 and Jersey Mike's, as well as the other warrant items and minutes. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? How about move to approve? <laughs> Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Motion made by Attorney Collette and seconded by Mrs. Cormier to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Hearing none, we'll put the matter to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The motion carries. Uh, Ms. Morris is not here this evening, so we'll be moving on to new business. Item 365. Did I skip over you the subcommittees? I turned the page too quick. Uh, we have item E, the subcommittees, the finance subcommittee. Is it true? Mr. Lafreniere. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the finance committee met November 7th. Uh, let's see, the committee reviewed the expense report. Mr. Hawk noted that the uh, Gardner Academy building maintenance and district building maintenance uh, had to split 50-50 to pay for uh, a water heater replacement. This was unexpected, of course. 
Um, district school nurse, uh, nurse salary is in the negative. Um, this will be fixed next month as we move uh, funds to cover the shortfall uh, with a grant. Um, this was uh, expected and planned for. Um, the district tuition collaborative is negative. Uh, this is due to a large incumbents. When a student is placed in the uh, collaborative, funds are encumbered, encumbered for the rest of the year. However, uh, they may not be there the entire year. Um, Mr. Hawk also noted that ELL uh, teacher line is now in the positive, 44,000. Um, we also had discussion uh, uh, around the substitute teachers line at each school, particularly Gardner High School just seems to be uh, extremely uh, high this year. Um, uh, we also, uh, Mr. Ark also noted that the salt barn is up and ready to go for the winter. Hopefully it won't be used that much. Um, also we voted on the consent agenda was uh, two donations. Uh, one was from the class of 1974 for $1,048.14. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, um, and uh, the class of 1974 uh, is closing their class account and donated the remainder to Garden High School. It was determined that another round uh, picnic table to go uh, at Watkins Field would be best. Um, this donation will go towards that table. Jersey Mike's also donated $2,214.94. Uh, Jersey Mike's hosted a uh, four-day fundraiser for Garden High School Music Department. Uh, and that money will fund future expen uh, unexpected costs, instrument repairs, and updates. And that was it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Is there any you. questions, comments, concerns on the reports of the finance committee? Thank you to those organizations for those donations. Now moving on to item F. Ms. Morris is not here with us this evening, so we're moving on to item G. Item number 3651, second reading of policies. Is there a motion on the floor? I have a motion yes. that we accept <laughs> the above policies. Is there a second? A second. second. Motion made by Mrs. Hurst, second by Mrs. Cormier to accept policies JICA, student dress code JJD, athletic policy JJF, student activities accounts JJIF, head injuries and concussions and extracurricular athletic activities, JK, student conduct, and JKAA, physical restraint policy and procedures. Is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, I'll put the matter to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 3652, uh, contract amendments to Unit A and B of the Gardner Educational, Gardner Educators Association. Mrs. Harris. Um, Mark, can you speak to that? Oh, absolutely I can. Um, so essentially we, we worked really hard um, to get to the lang um, to get to the language on um, safe and supportive schools with the union. When we did our draft of the of the contract, we missed changing the language to what the updated language was. When we sent it to them, they missed that we missed it. So um, on both sides, so we were both um, um, I was talking with um, uh, Ms. Hurst and uh, the GEA. We said we'd like to have a new contract because it just makes sense to just update the contract rather than have a side letter as we're so early in the contract. Um, so we thought we could just um, change the language and update the contract. I'll move to accept the amendments. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Attorney Palaven, second by Mr. Lafrenier to accept the amendments as presented. Is there any discussion on that motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Item 3653, Curriculum Coordinators Update with District MCAS. Dr. Logan. I think I need to. It's easy to turn off. Mm -hmm. There's only, there's only one amendment. 
Well, it's an amendment for, for two unit units. A and unit B. Oh, you, oh unit, okay. That's a great question. Okay. I mean, the motion was for both of them, correct? Yeah. yeah. I made the motion to accept both. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Helen. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Good evening. So uh, this is a, a brief update on the spring of 2024 MCAS administration for all of our students. Looking at it from a district <coughs> lens. Uh, each year, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, gives each district in the Commonwealth an accountability status and currently our district status is not requiring assistance or intervention. However, we do have um, three of our schools that require assistance in particular areas. Um, and so they look at each individual school separately and we get an accountability, uh, like a mini accountability for each school. And tied to that is particular um, assistance and support from the statewide system of supports, which is a branch of the department. Uh, and so we are working with them currently. Just briefly, um, showing you some trends of what's been happening over the last several years. I know it's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but at the very bottom, this is looking at our ELA scores as a district from 2019 prior to COVID. You'll notice that a year is missing in 2020 because we did not have MCAS during that year of COVID, um, all the way up through last spring. Um, what I wanted to point out in each of these next slides that you'll see, this one is for ELA and the other two slides are for math and science. The dotted line that you see in this graph is the state and how they performed as a state. And then the blue line is how we as a district performed. We tend to be trending with the state, but I did want to point out that um, in terms of our distance away from the state, in 2019, we were 13 percentage points away from the state in ELA, and currently in 2024, we were at 11% away. So we're, we're kind of seeing a little bit of improvement here in, in that gap between our results and the states, but our goal is to continue reducing that gap. The other thing, I'm sorry, before you go on to the next slide, I did want to mention that um, Dr. Pellegrino's, one of his goals is to reduce the gap between our most marginalized populations, which is EL and students with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So I just did want to make a quick plug for this. Our EL students in 2019 <coughs> had a gap for students who were not ELs of 25% in their performance for um, achievement. And in 2025, that gap was reduced to 15%. And our students with disabilities had a gap of 32% to students without disabilities in 2019. And in 2024, it was dropped to 27%. So those gaps are reducing. <clears throat> For math, we had a 12% gap with the state in achievement across the district in 2019. And currently we have an 11% gap, so we're marginally closing that gap. But EL students in 2019 had a 26% gap with those students who were not ELs. And in 2024, that gap was reduced to 14%. Um, students with disabilities had a gap of 31% to students without disabilities in 2019. And in 2024, that dropped to 24%. Uh, in science, our gap actually with the state has dropped a little bit from 10% in 19 to 13% in 2024. Um, our EL population in 2019 and 24 wasn't large enough um, to have data. You have to have so many students um, take the test as a district in order to have that information. But the students with disabilities in 2019 had a gap with students without disabilities of 35%, and that was reduced in 2024 to 19%. So I just wanted to let you know um, that that gap that we've closely been paying attention to is starting to reduce, and we're continuing to, to try to do that. General findings um, that we were able to pull from the data for MCAS is that 
We do have students in certain subgroups that consistently perform lower than our students not in subgroups. Um, and the number one group um, that has the largest gap is students with disabilities. Our second group is English learners. And then third is our econo economically disadvantaged population. Um, but across the board, in all grades, what we're finding is that in both ELA and math, our students perform lower in areas where, they're, where there's critical thinking required and reasoning and explanation. So most of our focus academically is around increasing students' uh, um, opportunities to do those things, to think critically and to, and to provide reasons and explanations with that thinking. So how are we using this data to inform what we do next? Uh, we talked a lot about our district improvement plan in September and how we're really focused on all of our data, whether it's social emotional learning or academic data, to determine how we're going to or what focus we want to have. And this is, a, this is in step with all of those things in our district improvement plan, in our school improvement plans. Um, Number one, we have contracted with the Lynch Leadership Academy um, over the last, what are we in year five now with our, with our training? Um, over the last five years and we're using them in many different ways. We're using them to increase our leadership capacity around instructional improvement and, and um, district change implementation. We're also using them to provide specific um, professional development to our leaders at central office, our leaders as principals, our leaders as um, assistant principals and other administrators and we're also using them for our teacher leaders and I think I mentioned that when we were talking about the district improvement plan but most recently we're using our tag, our targeted assistant grant fund for our middle school as they are a school in need of assistance to really focus in on instructional improvement in the classrooms with our teachers and our teacher leaders and our admin teams to help sustain and, and monitor that progress. Another thing that we'll be doing and that we have been doing the last couple of years is working with the Department of Elementary Education statewide system of supports. We had our first meeting with them this this year uh, last week and we'll be meeting with them again this week to talk about specifically what are we going to target and how can they help to support us all of our focus will be on the middle school because that is where we started the work with the ssos um, last year and we want to continue that so we can monitor that progress and make sure that change continues to happen um, what some of the things they're going to be doing is looking at our common planning time and looking to make sure that we're planning effectively for classes and then also looking at classroom um, classroom <coughs> lessons math and ela is the primary focus but just to make sure that the the planning that we're doing in those common planning times are translating into the classroom and that we're seeing the most effective instructional strategies as um, as designed in those plans They'll be working with, with the central office strategically and they'll be working with um, the middle school administrative staff specifically around monitoring common planning times, monitoring learning walks and observations and feedback, and monitoring student outcome data. <clears throat> um, and as a group, as a district, we'll be looking at that data as well with our district academic um, MTSS team to make sure that we're we're all moving together and if there is if there is a school that needs particular attention then we know where to direct direct that focus um, so that's where we are right now um, all of the work that we're doing this year and moving forward is focused really around the data that we're pulling and it's not just MCAS we're looking at our our data around the new assessments that we op adopted this year for STAR um, from Renaissance Learning and we're using uh, we're using dropout data we're using attendance data we're using all kinds of data 
um, graduation rate data. We're looking at um, office referral data. We're trying to triangulate our data as much as possible so we can wrap around the schools and wrap, wrap around our kids and give them the supports that they need um, as, as noted by that data. <clears throat> and I, I have to say Kathy is um, you know, in charge of the academic um, pillar of MTSS for us. However, it's a team. And we have two experts when it comes to MTSS at developing it and implementing it with Joyce West and Amber Cassavance. They've been phenomenal help and Lori Simpson um, as well as a team, we've really developed a lot of processes and we've jumped ahead um, of what we could normally do because they had insights and uh, things that they've done on the SEL and behavioral side of things where we knew, okay, we need to get this in place. We need these fidelity checks. We need to make sure that these things are happening. Um, and then the, the, so what I'm really proud of is we had that meeting with SSOS. Their director came in and visited um, the elementary school and was just blown away. She asked us to actually speak at their upcoming conference. Um, we're, we're giving, basically, we're gonna tell them, tell these folks of, in, that are participating in the SOS, SSOS what we're doing. Because what she said was, I don't find other districts that are doing this. There are places that have co components of S MTSS, but they're not doing it in such a robust way. We, have, we still have a long way to go to actually have the full change in practice, have the full process where we want it to be, and that's going to take time. Um, I keep getting told by everybody we need to be patient, and I know we need to be patient, but none of us are patient because it's our kids, and we want our kids to succeed. Um, but I was really proud of the fact that we're gonna be presenting in December mm -hmm. at some, um, um, to um, a group of schools um, who are trying to start this up, and there just aren't really a lot of um, models that have actually implemented this fully in the schools. Um, and again, I attribute that to, to the team at the district level, but then the leaders at the school level and then the teachers, everybody's pulling in the same direction. So I'm just really proud of the work that we're doing. Um, and I'm, 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 we're very planful, I'm not gonna say hopeful, we're very planful that this will be a successful way to reach all of our students and make sure we're eliminating those gaps. Um, I just have a question. I don't even know if you can answer this right now, but do you find that like from these other assessments and evaluations that are being done throughout the school year that it's matching the data that is coming out with the MCAS? Like, does that seem to make sense what we're seeing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the STAR testing is, um, is, is very predictive and we have two different ways of looking at it. We can look at the STAR data by just checking a box very simply and saying, um, so we can look at it as if the children were taking the test today with the knowledge they have, how might they perform on the test? And then we also have the ability to look at it as a predictive value to say, based on what they know now, this is what we predict they will be able to do when they do take it in the spring. So we look at it in both of those ways so that we can really kind of focus in. And we're able to then look at individual students with that same kind of lens and then say, what exactly are they missing? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Parker. you. Moving on to item number 3654, Director of School Health Services update. This was included in your packet for information. Is there any questions, comments, concerns on that update? Thank you, Director McCaffrey. Item number 3655, Grant Administrator's update. This was included in your packet for information. Are there any qu other questions, comments, concerns on this item? Thank you, Director Dunn. Item number 3656, special education update. This was included in your packet for information. Is there any discussion on this item? Thank you, Director West. Item number 3657, this was included in your packet for information as part of the report that is 3656 that we just voted on, or not voted on, but just went over. Any questions, comments, concerns on that last paragraph of that document? Thank you again, Director West. Item H, communications, Dr. Pellegrino. Um, just a few quick things. Um, first is, you know, I know a lot of people out there are uh, wondering what the MCAS question means that um, it, it did pass. So it is uh, no longer the requirement to have that um, as, the, as a graduation requirement. 
However, I was just on the commissioner's call today. There is still a competency determination. So students have to pass particular classes with particular grades. So the local control is still determining whether or not students meet our, our graduation requirements. So those are still set locally. Um, more to come on that though, um, as to whether or not students who in the past have not, did not receive a diplomas because of MCAS, do they, if they qualify with the classes they took and the grades they got, are they able to get diplomas? Those are all questions that will be answered in the, um, uh, in the few, next few months. I think December 5th is when they're voting on this. Um, uh, second thing, I will be doing my residencies again. So two years ago, I, I did about a week um, in each one of the schools. Next week, I'll actually be at the middle school um, for five days. So I still will do meetings and things like that that I need to, but most of them, any of them that I can do at the middle school, I'm gonna do at the middle school. Um, and this is just where I'd like to see how the schools are running, their pace, um, what their strengths are, their weaknesses, and what we need to do in terms of um, resource distribution to make, sure <coughs> to make sure they have what and who they need. Um, and last couple things, you know, this weekend we do have the um, Harvest Festival um, from 12 to 3 at the Garden Elementary School. And we have the play, The Mystery of the Missing Letter, which is here, I believe, right? Um, this Saturday. So I'm kind of excited to see that in, in a very different venue. Here is in City Hall Auditorium, not the chamber. <laughs> uh, yeah, this would be a small stage. <laughs> Although I can't wait for our auditorium to open. So. That is all I have. Any questions, comments, concerns for the superintendent? Mm -mm. Moving on to final comments of the school committee. Mrs. Hurst. I was very impressed with um, the recognitions tonight. Um, it really made me feel really good about my community and the things that are going on here. Um, <clears throat> I also left everybody a postcard tonight. Um, just with the fact that the holidays are coming up and um, this seems to be a really hard time for a lot of people after the election and everything, um, it's important to, to have conversations. Um, and uh, this um, support group is a wonderful resource. I wanted to make sure everybody had a copy of the card just so that they have it, file it away. You might need it someday, you don't know, or you might be able to help somebody with that. Um, thank you, Dr. Gogan, for your presentation. <coughs> I've noticed over the years that the, the gap keeps closing with our marginalized students, and that's something that I've, you know, that's. I've been advocating and trying to get, you know, those things for many, many years, and it, it is just wonderful to see it come to fruition. And again, it is, it's a work in progress. It never ends. And kudos to the district. Attorney Blaine. Um, well, yesterday was Veterans Day, so I'd like to say thank you to all the veterans that have served and done what they've had to do for this um, country. And then, um, obviously, the holidays are coming up. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and Merry Christmas and everything obviously we'll be back here before then but um, I think you know I appreciate when Mrs. Hurst brings to our attention the needs that can exist um, and I think it's important that people do know what's available to them um, and that there are services out there for anyone who needs any help. Thank you. Mrs. Schwartz. I attended the uh, band concert at the at the high school gym on the 29th. Great program. And I, they also published the upcoming events for the rest of the year. I'm looking forward so I can attend. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lafrenia. Uh, just cool. uh, hope everyone has a nice Thanksgiving. And also a big thank you to those volunteers that are working with the immigrants. It's, it's huge. I appreciate, really appreciate that. That's it. Thanks. Mrs. Cormier. Nothing else to add. Thank you. I'll echo the thanks to the group working with the immigrants uh, and the community um, for their recent work. I'd also throw in a congratulations to all of our sports teams who seem to continue to kill it this year with uh, <laughs> the playoff games now are on us. And uh, congratulations to the Garden High School Band on their bronze medal uh, performance at the uh, finals competition this year, as well as their uh, Oakmont exhibit show that they did this year with the other North Central marching band programs at the different high schools. That was really neat to see. 
Um, and lastly, I want to close by saying thank you to uh, two students from our woodshop class at the high school who made a Veterans Day flag that was displayed at the city's Veterans Day ceremony yesterday. Uh, the amount of people from the different veterans organizations in the city that came in and asked who could take it home with them when it was said it was going to hang in City Hall, the look of, you know, like, I wish I could take that with me. It was quality work that was put into that, and it really touched a lot of people that was there. So thank you very much to those two students who um, decided to say thank you in a special and unique way. It was really meant a lot to a lot of people yesterday. Uh, and with that, there are no executive sessions this evening. Our next meeting will be on Monday, December 9th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. here in the council chamber. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion made by Mr. LaFrenia, second by Mr. Schwartz to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great evening.